Welcome. We're glad you could join us for worship this morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching. Today, we're going to focus on being welcoming. From all of us, we welcome you in the name of Christ. So please, come inside with us.
Good morning. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us through your love. Renew us and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with you through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because your love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of compassion, encourage our relationships with our sisters and brothers in Christ. Bless our conversations shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. We pray for those who are hospitalized, in centers of assisted living, in nursing homes, or homebound. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. God of community, we give thanks for this community of faith. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Receive these prayers and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
first scripture lesson is from Genesis 22, 1 through 14. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Our psalm today is Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? I will sing to the Lord, my heart shall rejoice. How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? I will sing to the Lord, my heart shall rejoice. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I'm shaken. I will sing to the Lord, my heart shall rejoice. But I trusted in your steadfast love, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. I will sing to the Lord, my heart shall rejoice. Our gospel reading today is Matthew 10, 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me save that thou art. Thou my best God, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life. Be 
thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father and I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling and I with thee Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only first in my heart. My King of heaven, my treasure thou art. My King of Heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joy, a bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall. Be still, my fish, I know. Welcome. All are welcome here. Jesus just shared with us from the Gospel of St. Matthew, welcoming words. We as the Church of Jesus Christ and as families in and out of the Church are called upon to be a welcoming and caring community. The lady of the house was giving last-minute instructions to her butler before the start of a very large dinner being held at the estate. Bentley, she said, I want you to stand at the front door and welcome the guests by name as they arrive. One of the occupational hazards of being a butler is to be welcoming to people who actually aren't particularly welcomable. It isn't just butlers who have that experience. I know that there are servers in restaurants that have to put up with patrons who aren't always pleasant are welcomable. Mormon missionaries and Jehovah's Witnesses are always polite and very pleasant. They come to our front doors, but still, as pleasant as they are, few of us are thrilled with when they or any evangelists come knocking at our doors. Hopefully, no matter what, we can be a welcoming face to all who come to us. It isn't always, of course, easy. Two church members were visiting, doing door-to-door -door calling. They knocked on the door of a home where the woman who, who opened it was not happy to see them. She told them in no uncertain terms she didn't want to hear their message, and she slammed the door in their faces. To her surprise, however, the door didn't close. It bounced back open. She tried slamming the door again, really putting her back into it. The result was the same. The door bounced open. Well, convinced that the unwanted callers must be sticking their foot in the door, she reared back to give it a slam that would teach them a lesson. When one of them said to her, Ma'am, before you do that again, you need to move your cat out of the way. Well, that was what was preventing the door from closing. Door-to-door -door salespersons, they're getting rarer. They do have modern descendants, however, as we are well aware. They are those telemarketers, those computer spams, pop-up advertising, 
some of the unwelcome realities of the age in which we live. Being welcoming and being welcomable. As important as those characteristics are in sales, they're even more important for us in the Church of Jesus Christ. That is what the Kingdom of God is all about. Through Jesus Christ, we get welcomed into the family of God through our baptism by the Holy Spirit. We're incorporated into this family in the sacrament of holy baptism, reminding ourselves each and every time we gather here as we see the baptismal font that God welcomes us and calls us even by name. We're made a part of what we might call Welcome Incorporated or the Body of Christ. We are publicly welcomed in this ritual, God adopting us and claiming us and making us into a follower of his son, Jesus. As baptized followers of Jesus, Jesus' mission becomes our mission. To proclaim the good news of God is the business of what we're all about, the business of welcoming the lost, the outcast, the forgotten, the stranger, even the enemy. When that message is incorporated into our lives, we give flesh and blood to that message. We become both welcoming of and welcomable by others, because that is the very essence of the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of Christ, of the salvation. It is a welcoming message that Jesus proclaims to us. We receive and it becomes a part of us. And then we share it with others. We welcome others into this fellowship of salvation. We become welcomable and welcoming because of the gift that we receive, finally, of eternal life. This life that God gives us, that we're finally ushered into and welcomed to the kingdom of God, is a gift. It's a gift that we do not earn, but it's a gift that we receive by grace when we confess the good name of Jesus Christ. This becomes a gift that is non-renewable. It is not a resource that will ever eventually run out. Its price will not go up tomorrow or ever because it was once and for all paid. The bill was paid by Jesus Christ, who suffered on the cross that we might be welcomed to the kingdom of God. But for that to happen, we who have the message must share that message, not just in words and theories, but attitudes and actions the body of Christ, welcome incorporated, is to be filled with open doors, open hearts, open minds. It is difficult sometimes because that causes us sometimes to be included, to be afraid. It sometimes is very risky to share that good news. It is risky to welcome another that we may not even know into our lives. We might feel more like fish out of water and disciples sharing the word. The good news is that in spite of the seriousness of discipleship, Jesus assures us that we are his disciples called to proclaim the good news. And we are not alone. God gives us the Holy Spirit to be with us. Jesus is at work and we become his hands and feet, welcoming even the smallest and also the greatest, sharing gestures of love, realities of compassion. Being incorporated into God's people does not mean that we will carry on business as usual. The Apostle Paul makes it clear that when he tells us the most authentic witness to the good news of God's love, occurs when we present ourselves wholly and honestly 
before God and before others, no longer living in sin, but living as forgiven children of a loving God. Through faith in what God has done for us, in Jesus Christ, we are set free of fear, and we can welcome others and be welcoming. The reality is that sometimes we, as Christians, are our own West's worst enemies. We're accused by the world around us of being hypocrites, and sometimes we are. We are accused of being holier than thou, are super Christians, and sometimes we act that way. But really, we are not perfect. As the bumper sticker says so clearly, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. It is the attitude that we are a forgiven sinner proclaiming the good news of God's grace. We are a community of faith that is welcoming one to another. When we have guests here at church, and they report back to me sometimes how welcoming and how warmly they were received here at Zion Church. We are known by that welcoming attitude that is a part of who we are. Sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. We must be freer to be who God has made us to be, the warm, welcoming, compassionate people. We support agencies that are also welcoming of all kinds and such and conditions of humankind. We have those wonderful institutions and agencies in our very midst. They are such places as Kinder Cottage, Hoylton Ministries, Catholic Urban Programs, Chow, Homes for the Aging, St. Vincent de Paul, Du Bois Conference Center, UCC Food Pantry, Inner City Missions, Ministries for the Mentally and Emotionally Needy, along with many, many others. We welcome and provide ministry and a place for those who are needful among us. These are ministries for growth and development of troubled persons. We are ambassadors welcoming all. We are called upon to be a welcoming and a caring community. When we become imbued with that message, we indeed no longer need be afraid but we can reach out to another, known or unknown to us, extend fellowship, something so small as a smile and a good word, and also support the work of the Church of Jesus Christ in order that we might always be strengthened to welcome others and to be a welcoming community to be welcomed by others. Thanks be to God for the Son he gave to us who welcomes us into God's kingdom. Amen. Let us say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I'm recharged. We hope you are as well. Some of my favorite songs this week and hopefully you are singing along with Courtney. As you venture out this week, remember to be welcoming and kind to everyone we meet. Welcome everyone as though you were welcoming Christ himself. Next week, we will have a congregation worshiping with us as we record. We will continue to record our virtual service format as well. If you are near us and wish to join us, we begin at 10 a.m. See you next week in person or virtually. Peace be with you.